Hi, I'm Stephanie Catalano, licensed clinical social worker and personal development author. Welcome to Mindful Makeover, a podcast for women who want to learn how to live mindfully, become deliberate thinkers, and align with their true essence and most authentic self. The fact that you're here with me not only tells me you're ready to begin reaching your highest potential, but also sends a powerful message to the universe. I've had an opportunity to work with hundreds of women to help them tap into their inner power and create the life they desire, and nothing makes me feel more alive than to be a witness to a person's individualized transformation and growth. If you're ready to achieve your mindful makeover and create the life you desire, then let's get started. Each episode will leave you feeling educated, empowered, and elevated. Hi, beautiful. Welcome back to this week's episode. I can't believe it's September already. It is so crazy how fast time is flying by. And even for me, someone who does my very best to truly live mindfully one moment at a time, even with that practice, somehow time is going by fast. And there are definitely days when I feel like I don't have enough moments in the day. I'm not sure how that's happening, but it's happening. So this weekend, my fiance and I were at breakfast on Sunday, and we were both sitting there talking about how quickly the year has gone by and reminiscing on all the fun we've had so far. And while we were chatting away, he looks at me and says, we've had so many victories this year. We've accomplished so much. In that moment, we both paused. Then we both started to name off the things we have accomplished. My fiance then looks at me and says, we should create a victory board so we can see everything we accomplished. When he said that, I literally had like this blank stare on my face and my jaw kind of dropped because I never heard anybody say a victory board. I absolutely love this idea, never heard of it before, and I thought it would be really, really cool to do. So often we hear about vision boards and we actually create vision boards. I know I have, I do that all the time. And I think they're really important and a great way to help keep you aligned with your goals and to help you manifest your goals and your dreams. But it's not often, if at all, we hear anybody talking about a victory board, which is to take the time to list out the things you've accomplished in the year or a week or the day. It can really be for anything. In in our case, we were talking about a victory board for the year. So often, The years fly by and most people go into the new year feeling the exact same, carrying the same weight, feeling unfulfilled, stressed out, and feeling like nothing has changed or been accomplished. It's really, really easy to fall into that trap, but it's up to each of us to create change. It's up to us to let go of what doesn't serve us and to identify and acknowledge our accomplishments. No one will do this for you. These are things that I think most of us know, but when you really sit here and let that sink in, it does create this aha moment that nobody's going to do it for you, right? No one's going to come up to you and say, hey, I see you're struggling with this. It's time to let that go. Or, hey, I heard you accomplish this, this. I think you should celebrate it. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't have that. It doesn't mean people aren't looking out for us or people don't care. Of course they do but everybody's moving at a speed so fast and life ends up running us rather than the other, the other way or the opposite, which is us running our life, us having some sense of control over what happens in our days from celebrating the good things, doing things that are fun and make us feel good to changing the things that are no longer serving or supporting us. Needless to say, when me and my fiance got home from breakfast, we actually did sit down and create our victory boards. And it was absolutely amazing to see how much we both accomplished. Everything we said we wanted to accomplish, we did, then a whole lot more. For me, it was publishing my third book, Mindful Makeover, starting this podcast. I created and launched a six-week online course. I recorded 10 videos that go along with my workbook, Mindful Makeover, which are really me guiding the person through the experience of achieving their mindful makeover. We traveled to Greece, got engaged. I grew in so many ways emotionally, which for me, some of them were like actually milestones that I'm so proud of. And while we were sharing our list with each other, we couldn't help but smile. It felt really, really good. I know I'm that person in my life that I truly do my best to give 100% each day 
and I try not to waste any time. I'm really intentional in everything that I do. And I know that I've been killing it because I'm working hard, like really hard. Um, I've always been a hard worker, but especially now that I have created my own business, for me, there's been like a totally shift in my mentality and the way that I do things and the way that I see things and the way that I work. And while all along I knew that I've been making progress and I knew that I was accomplishing the things that I said I wanted to, but something different happened when I actually sat down in a quiet space and put pen to paper and listed out the things that I've done this year. There were over like 26 really big things that I accomplished and it felt so good and created really like a wow factor, you know? Um, so I wanna share this with you all and I wanna invite you all to do the same. I think it's really interesting how we are usually the first ones to acknowledge someone else's success and applaud them for their accomplishments and the progress they're making. And for some reason, when it comes to celebrating our individual success and accomplishments, we forget to cheer for ourselves. We do the same thing when someone comes to us and shares with us that maybe something's bothering them or something they're upset about. We're the first ones to kind of talk them through that and help them get to that place of being able to let it go, letting them know it will be okay, you're better than that, or whatever the story is. But when it comes to our own stuff, it's much harder to say, okay, it's time to let it go, or as they say, practice what you preach. I think sometimes people think in order for something to be considered an accomplishment, it has to be this huge achievement. And while sure it can be, it absolutely doesn't have to be. I know for me, there are definitely days when I absolutely don't feel like adulting. I don't want to wake up. I don't want to do life. I want to be lazy. I want to stay in bed, read a book, whatever the story is. And I have to force myself to get up and make the bed and adult. And on that day, in that moment, to me, that's an accomplishment. So the point is, it's about identifying the things that you've been able to do even when you don't want to do them or when you thought maybe you weren't, you weren't able to do a certain thing and you were able to achieve it. Big or small, it doesn't matter, it all counts. And I think one of the coolest things is you get to define what a goal is. You get to define what an accomplishment is, what success is. Maybe you updated your resume. Maybe you reconnected with an old friend. Maybe you went out to dinner by yourself for the first time or even bought yourself flowers for the first time without thinking this is weird to buy myself flowers. Maybe you got a promotion or landed your dream job. Maybe you missed a deadline and you didn't beat yourself up over it. Whatever it is that you've done that has made you feel good or proud, acknowledge it and celebrate it. I truly believe every step of all of our journeys matters. Every step is leading us to the next step. And it's so important to pay attention along the way, to acknowledge how many steps you've taken and to celebrate your life. No matter where you are in your journey, you're there because you have worked hard to get there and it deserves to be celebrated. You deserve to be celebrated. And as this year wraps up, I want to share the reminder with you to stay focused and to continue to choose what matters. Don't let another year go by remaining the same. I'm not here saying change who you are, but what I am here to say is that I think every person wants to evolve and every person deep down wants to achieve more, but very few actually do. If you're listening to this podcast, then I know you're one of the few who actually evolve or are evolving. The people who evolve are the ones who are willing to look in and uncover what's deep inside. The ones who maintain self-awareness no matter how hard and uncomfortable it can be. The ones who tolerate discomfort and remain patient with discomfort. The ones who don't give up no matter how many times they fall down. The ones who do celebrate their success, their accomplishments. The ones who aren't afraid to say, hey, look what I achieved, right? With, with it being nine months into the year, I'm inviting you to check in with yourself. I created a fun way to do this and I actually did it on myself. You don't at all have to do it this way, but I'm gonna share it with you and if it resonates with you, I'm inviting you to really take the time to do this. So here it goes. I'm suggesting you identify nine victories you've had this year and nine things you want to see improve, let go or change as we approach the new year. So I guess it would be a total of 19. 
I picked nine since we are nine months, nine months in, but you can identify as many or as less as you'd like. It doesn't matter. The point is to really check in with yourself and have a clear understanding of where you are and to highlight how far you've come. But it doesn't stop there. Once you have identified your victories and the things you want to see changed or improved, then identify four ways you will celebrate your success and four ways you can create the changes you want to see in 2020 starting right now. I picked four since we have four months left counting this month in the year, but again, pick whatever number you want. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's eight, it doesn't matter. The point is to have an honest assessment of yourself, an honest check-in, an honest reflection, an honest conversation. According to you, what have you accomplished? And according to you, what would you like to see different in the new year? The idea of identifying four ways you can celebrate and begin creating the difference you want to see in 2020 is simply to help hold you accountable and to take ownership of how you will celebrate and create change. When it comes to evolving and personal development, accountability is a huge necessary part. Without it, it's nearly impossible to evolve and change. And it's really easy to say, I want this to happen. I want this to change. But if you don't actually identify how can you make that happen, nothing will change, right? Nothing changes if nothing changes. And to change is a choice. Change doesn't happen by itself. Change happens when a person says, hey, I recognize I don't like this, or hey, I acknowledge I've been doing this and it's actually not helping me or working out for me, and because I acknowledge that and recognize it, I'm now going to do this so it can be better, so it can be different, so it can change. And again, the same goes with celebrating. Celebration doesn't happen by itself. No one's going to pat you on your back. No one's going to say, hey, today's a good day to celebrate your life or hey, today's a good day to celebrate everything that you've accomplished up until this point. To celebrate is a choice. It's about you looking in and saying, wow, I've done X, Y, and Z. Wow, I've accomplished one, two, and three. And because I've done that, I'm choosing to celebrate today. And When I say celebrate, it doesn't have to be throwing yourself a party, but it totally can be throwing yourself a party. It could be as simple as slowing down and taking a hot bubble bath, treating yourself to a nice dinner, treating yourself to a manicure and pedicure, buying yourself a new outfit, or maybe it's none of those things. Maybe it's Maybe it's you staying at home and just really enjoying a quiet moment with yourself and telling yourself, I'm proud of my, I'm proud of me. I'm proud of you. Right. And having that internal dialogue with yourself, maybe for the first time, or maybe again, the point I really want to make with each of you in this episode is that life is so, so beautiful and possibilities are truly endless. If I've learned anything up until this point, it's that you have to take ownership of your life you are the only person responsible for creating the life you desire you are the only person responsible for letting go of the things that aren't helping you you are the only person responsible for celebrating your victories right for making your visions come true turning your dreams into reality And yes, is it wonderful and is it beautiful when we have people in our life who join us in those celebrations, when we have people in our life who join us and support us when it comes to letting go of things and changing things? Yes, all of that matters. We need this. I talked about connection in my in my last episode, right? That connection is more than a want. It's a need. All of this matters. But what matters most is that you own your life, that you create the life you want, that you give yourself permission to do whatever it is you want to do, that you celebrate yourself. There's never a right time. You don't need anyone's permission. One of the saddest things to me is when I hear stories of how life has passed someone by and nothing changed for that person, not because it couldn't change, but because they didn't choose change. I hope you will always know you are worth it. You are filled with abilities. You are filled with gifts. Everything you need is inside of you. There is no right time. You don't need anyone's permission, right? Like I said, to celebrate your life or to change. All you need is desire and willingness. 
And if you're a person who maybe you struggle with starting this kind of work on your own, whether it be celebrating how far you've come or actually looking in and getting clear on what you need to change, I want to remind you Mindful Makeover 30 Day Workbook and Guide is available. It's currently on Amazon for $25.95, and that's the actual workbook, or it's available on Kindle for $4.44. And you don't have to have a Kindle. You can just download the free app. And this workbook and guide has truly been created in a way that will help you look inward. And it's going to help you identify the things in your life that are perhaps keeping you stuck. And it's also going to help you highlight the things that you have accomplished. And it really kind of becomes like your own little personal diary or journal. So that's available to you. You can find it on Amazon. All the links are also on my website, which is www.themindfulliving.com. I will also share all of this in the notes of this episode. Um, just want you all to know that I'm here for you. You deserve everything that you want. Everything that you dream of, it can be yours if you choose to go out there and get it. And like I said, with it being nine months into the year, Please, 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 please give yourself a moment to really check in with yourself, celebrate your victories, and get clear on the things that you want to see better changed or improved as we approach 2020. Don't wait for the new year because all we have is this moment. So here's to our victories and here's to taking ownership of changing whatever it is we want. Let's make the rest of 2019 the best yet and continue to set ourselves up for success and feeling good. Thank you for joining me today. If you found today's episode to be insightful and inspiring, subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. And I kindly ask that you please leave me a review so together we can help the next person. If interested in scheduling, coaching, counseling, public speaking, or workshops, check out www.themindfulliving.com and come connect with me on Instagram at mindfulliving.now where I share daily inspiration, mindful skills, tips, and more. Mindful Makeover 30-Day Workbook and Guide for Women is available on Amazon, or you can find the link on my website and in my Instagram bio. Until the next episode, stay mindful and always remember the power that lives inside of you.